The first SUV from the Bentley brand is the Bentayga. We have the review. Its cousin, the Audi Q7, has now been in the market for a few months. How does it fare against its top rivals? It is the Bentega from Bentley, the first ever SUV from this brand, and we have it for you here on CNB. Welcome to a brand new episode. I'm Siddharth Panayak Partnikar. Thanks for joining us. The Bentega, of course, takes off from where the EXP9 concept left off. But remember, it debuted at last year's Frankfurt Motor Show, so it's already been getting a lot of rave reviews in different markets. It finally makes an appearance here in India this week, which is why we have all the details on it for you now. The name for Bentley's latest model and its first ever SUV comes from the Roque Bentega rock formation in Spain's Grand Canary Island. The rock stands 1404 meters tall and is one of the most stunning and imposing natural rock formations in the world. Now it began its life as a concept car shown at the 2012 Geneva Motor Show. Bentley got a lot of stick for its EXP9F concept SUV for a universally criticized design. But it went ahead with the program and finally we have the much prettier Bentega. The design of the Bentega is far less controversial than the EXP9F with a more swept back and sporty appeal. It is more flying spur than Mulsanne and the front grille is typically Bentley and impeccably finished in shiny chrome. The twin lights look stylish and modern with the DRL ring also becoming a character-defining signature for the car. At the rear, the chrome edge taillights are very classic Bentley and offer a nice, simplistic yet retro feel. Now, since Bentley is part of the Volkswagen Group, it of course gets to share a lot with other group brands, which is why this car sits on the same platform as the second generation Audi Q7 and uh, the third generation Porsche Cayenne that will come sometime next year globally. But it still has 80% of its components being completely new and different from the Q7. But the real story begins when you step inside the ample cabin. The car has rich quilted leather seats and leather or fine grain wood everywhere you look. Or there are classically styled chrome bits including the switches and knobs. The big screen at the center is loaded with every gadget or camera output you could think of and there is a panoramic roof of course. Automated sunshades, that's just one of the many, many, many features back here to pamper you as a buyer. You can pretty much think of it and this car has it in terms of that feature. Now, the regular Bentega, if you want to call it that, comes with the regular bench seat at the back for three passengers. This is the optional split seat arrangement, which gives you a more comfortable sort of a individual seat and uh, it can be adjusted every which way. It can recline. It also has a massage function. So, yeah, it's got pretty much everything you can think of in terms of either luxury or gadget or feature and uh, there are many things that you can add on as well now in terms of customizing the car there are again so many possibilities in terms of the materials and the colors you can get seven different kinds of wood veneers by the way to choose from and hang on even the seat belt there are 14 colors on offer for you to make the seat belt also to your individual taste the Bentega is not for everybody. The car is priced at 3 crore 85 lakh rupees ex showroom Delhi, but it isn't just about the price. Bentley will only make so many of them, even as its volumes will grow one and a half times with this car. Despite weighing over 2 tons, the Bentega pulls from 0 to 100 km per hour in a blistering 4.1 seconds. Yes, that is fast, and its top speed is a staggering 301 km per hour. While I certainly didn't get to test that claim, what I can tell you is that the massive W12 beast under the hood gives you instant response. A gentle tap on the accelerator and the car roars ahead. The engine is the new generation W12. The massive 6-litre churns out a huge 600 bhp and has 900 nm of peak torque. Now this is the new W12 engine and Bentley claims that it's more fuel efficient than its predecessor. 
by as much as 10%. How it does that is through cylinder deactivation technology of the 12 cylinders, six shut down and the car does that on its own. It senses that you're sort of cruising along, you don't really need too much performance or you're uh, coasting around at very low speeds and uh, yeah, it automatically shuts off those cylinders to make the car a little bit more efficient. All-wheel drive is standard on the Bentega and yes, the car has the chops to go off-road. The car's Bentley Dynamic Ride system allows for controlled high-speed cornering and great body control. There is a new active anti-roll bar that uses a pair of electric actuators. They help the car to soften or stiffen the front and rear bars and that's pretty innovative. Like other proper off-road type SUVs, the Bentega offers a rotary dial with various settings, dirt and gravel, snow and grass, sand, etc. for operation across various terrains. The car's suspension can be raised for higher ground clearance too. On the road is where the Bentega will spend most of its time though. It is quick, it is agile and its performance belies its huge size. The steering is a bit soft for my liking but the 8-speed ZF gearbox responds well and yes, you can use paddles to change gears too. I drove the car in the capital and I have to say the Bentega was totally at home in Lutyens, Delhi. Bentley will sell 4 or 5 Bentegas in India in the first year. Demand is expected to be much higher at the start but the allocation of units to India will remain in single digits. Now I mentioned that Bentley wants big volumes from this car. It's in the context of Bentley, so it will remain a niche car maker. I'll give you a sense of that because last year Bentley sold about 10,000 units globally in all markets across all models. With the Bentega, it expects to sell just 5,500 of only the Bentega, which means, of course, it's going up a 50% volume on its last year's target. So that tells you why this becomes an important model. With that, we'll slip into a very short break here on CMB. Join us for that three SUV shootout that's coming up. A concept car always points to the future, but this one is taking things not just to the immediate future, but looking at a much grander vision than that. Welcome back to CNB. That is the deployable sill step. That's optional equipment here on the Bentega. In the Indian context, that becomes perhaps important because it's a nice little feature for people to be able to get in and get out of the car easily. And uh, of course, given the extra height of this car versus some of the limousines that these buyers are used to, well, that could work. Now let's talk about the car that shares its platform, but little else with this particular one. That's of course the new Q7 from Audi. It's uh, got a good reception in India so far and it certainly offers a powerful engine and lots of features but does it really stand up tall against its rivals we put it to the test against the Volvo XC90 and the BMW X5 to find out the new second generation Audi Q7 has been hailed as a very well engineered and well executed product the new car is a massive 325 kgs lighter than its predecessor, is 28% more fuel efficient, is roomier and delivers on power, dynamics, technology and to a large extent design too. So just because it's the newest of them all, is it the best? The new Q7 is now joined by the imposing BMW X5 and the stunning Volvo XC90. Are there other choices? Sure. But these are the three that rank as relevant rivals in our book and each brings something new to the table. And I don't just mean their individual style or brand appeal. The BMW X5 is the car that sparked the premium SUV craze in many ways. The third generation sports activity vehicle, as BMW calls it, debuted in 2013. In India, we get the 30D engine only, which is the six cylinder 258 bhp powerhouse. The eight speed Steptronic sport transmission is quite quick, and on the whole, I really like this BMW drivetrain.
The Volvo XC90 came last year. Like the Q7, this second generation was also majorly delayed. More so, in fact. But the wait was worth it. The car is beautifully designed, has impeccable interiors and follows Volvo's new philosophy of moving away from six-cylinder engines to greener four-pots. The XC90 currently offers just its 2-litre diesel in India. The 225bhp output is good, but the 470nm of torque is what really gets my attention. All-wheel drive is standard and so is the 8-speed auto gearbox. The Q7 has ample torque too. Its large proportions and massive hood signify power and brutish force. The chiseled face and flanks work well, but yes, it's very typically Audi looking still and yes, it looks a little like the last Q7. The 3-litre engine turns out a generous 245 bhp and 600 nm of torque that kicks in nice and low. And yes, we have another 8-speed here too. The first generation Q7 had the flowing coupe roof line. It was certainly a pretty car and uh, it got all that attention for its good looks, courtesy Mr. Walter De Silva while he was at Audi. Now, this car definitely is an evolution of that, but it takes one criticism of that last Q7 into account. It's not just trying to be pretty now, it's also looking mean and butch and big and muscular. Just look at it. It's got this huge, big, wide mouth up front. Almost looks like it can have both these cars for dinner. The BMW X5 is all about macho good looks. If the last car was brawny, this one brings a sophistication to that brawn. And uh, it certainly sort of defines that quintessential truck image that an SUV is supposed to have. So I like it for that. But so different, so unique, and definitely the prettiest of the three. Throw in Thor's hammer and you've got me completely hooked onto the looks of uh, the XC90. It is Volvo's new design language. And uh, you know what, till we start to see it on a whole lot of other cars from Volvo, for now, the individuality of the XC90 certainly makes it the prettiest one for me. But you have to tell me which of the three cars you like in terms of looks. I will be curious to know what you think. Yes, certainly share that with me on Twitter at Sid Partinkar by using the hashtag CNB show. On the inside, the three are very different. While the X5 now looks the most dated, its subtle use of colors and lighter materials is still fresh. The material quality is impressive too, and it has mostly all the equipment you can think of. The sound system is Harman Kardon. On the XC90, you get a Bars and Wilkins. The big highlight of its Scandinavian design is the Census touchscreen central console. The iPad-like screen is just terrific, with lots of easy-to-navigate features and commands. No buttons and switches in this car. It's all very minimalist and sleek. The seats, too, are very comfortable and you get a great sense of space. The new Q7's cabin is also roomy and everything feels and looks solid and chunky. The gadgets are great, the music system is Bose and what really grabs your attention right away is what Audi calls the virtual cockpit. The instrument cluster is virtual and the screen is highly customizable, complete with full screen navigation. Very cool indeed. On the road, the three are very distinct. Sure, the XT90 has the smaller engine, but it still feels smooth and fun. That is, until you get into the X5. It's definitely an ample engine, but you don't get a brutish sense of power from it, which is surprising given the figures. It is very well mated to the uh, gearbox and it certainly does the job and it's nice and smooth and it completely cuts out lag, which is so satisfying to drive. You get a nice instant response from it. Having said that, the USP on the X5 is not so much 
the engine performance or the numbers it's got to be the really sheer strength of BMW as a brand which comes forth in the X5 II driving dynamics the X5 is so precise that it's a real treat to drive the engine could have been punchier and so the car at times feels a bit heavy but the steering and handling are super the Q7 though is the surprise package it is not only dynamically capable but also has terrific ride quality the car feels big powerful and ample and yet the car feels athletic too the gearbox is a pleasure to operate using the paddles and in auto mode too and the cabin is remarkably quiet each brand promises to bring us petrol variants of these cars over the next 4 to 10 months the XC90 T8 plug-in hybrid will get here first in August so now time for my verdict which SUV is practical for you to buy and more importantly which one is just bloody good now this is possibly more true in a Western context when it comes to how today an SUV is supposed to be a little bit different from before so it's supposed to be more efficient a greener car um, be more practical as well and the fact that Volvo downsized its engines well it certainly becomes the thinking man's SUV in that sense and so yes if I was thinking and therefore going with my mind the XC90 becomes possibly the obvious choice to go with but in India people in this segment are looking to not just sort of look at you know taking certain boxes on the practical side they really want to go with something which announces their arrival there is something to do with the brand and status symbol sort of attribute as well and also remember these cars have to be big brutes that's what SUVs are meant to be and so the BMW definitely has my heart because it's the car that uh, is, is the driver's car it's the one that appeals to my um, more emotional sensibilities for obvious reasons it's also good looking well both cars are good looking so then where does that leave you you come now to this car now it's always almost like a cliche when you're looking at uh, automobile reviews and comparisons the new car is always thought of as being the best one in this context it becomes important to actually accept that as a bit of a truth because when you're talking about the rivals in these segments they're always trying to best the last car they're always trying to best their rivals and so because the Q7 is the newest of course it's studied with the most features and the most uh, technology as well but what Audi has managed to do with this car which the last Q7 didn't do at all I was talking about how the XC90 has my mind the X5 has my heart this car is a meeting of both it wins on both heart and mind Oh, that engine does sound pretty good. I hope you liked our quick look at the Bentega and uh, everything else that we've shown you on the program today. Write in with all your feedback as always. We'd love to hear from you and I will see you next week.